Welcome back everyone to this week's technical. As ever, don't be afraid to subscribe, ring the little bell next to it. If you like the video, you can click the like button. And of course, you are welcome to leave me a comment at the end. In this video, we are talking about an important aspect of one of the UK's most significant infections of cattle. If you're a cattle farmer in the UK, the chances are you will have heard of BVD, bovine viral diarrhea. It's a disease caused by the BVD virus. Now, the BVD virus has an important quirk in its biology. That quirk has important consequences for how we control and eliminate the disease. This feature is the existence of persistently infected or PI animals. PIs are born carrying the BVD virus. Throughout life, they shed the virus, spreading it to healthy cattle. In adult non-pregnant cattle, the disease is typically pretty mild and often goes unnoticed. One sign is a mild diarrhea, hence the name. However, if it infects different classes of stock, it can cause different syndromes. If pregnant cows are infected, Depending on the stage of gestation, the stage of pregnancy, the cow may abort or undergo a stillbirth. Juvenile cattle are frequently immunosuppressed. That weakening of the immune system means they are more likely to succumb to pneumonia and scours, and those syndromes are more likely to be severe. BVD can also contribute to vaccine failure because it reduces the response of animals to a vaccine. Think of PIs as virus factories. They are prolific carriers and shedders of the virus. They themselves are inconsistently affected. The textbook image of a PI is an ill-thriven, slow-growing, hairy calf. However, that's not always the case. It is very difficult to identify them by eye. Eventually, many succumb to a syndrome called mucosal disease, which follows a spontaneous mutation of the BVD virus they're already carrying. This is an invariably fatal and unpleasant ulcerative disease of the gastrointestinal tract. If a PI female survives to the point where she has a calf, that calf will be a PI. The other means of generating a PI is if a naive, that is an unprotected animal, is infected between about day 80 and day 126 of pregnancy. In that case, the calf will typically be born as a PI. The reason for that is, is because at that particular stage of development, the calf's immune system is maturing. The immune system is learning what is self. If you think about it, the immune system is geared up to recognize and attack foreign invading cells. To know what's foreign, they have to know what is their own body, i.e. what is self. If the virus invades during the window, when the fetus's immune system is learning what self is, the virus will be recognized as self. The body never launches a response. The virus becomes resident in the calf and will remain with it throughout its life. The calf will never launch a response. The calf will never generate antibodies to BVD, Hence, PIs are always antibody negative. Routine testing is used to find and eliminate PIs from infected herds and thereafter to monitor for their re-entry. I'll not cover the different test types and strategies in this video. For now, we'll just say it depends on the situation. Often there are differences between dairy and beef herds. There is more information in a link in the video description to the BVD Free England website that outlines some of these strategies. But the overarching theme of those strategies is to find PIs. Why the biology lesson? I outline these details because BVD is an infection we can and should be able to eliminate from individual and also the national herd. Even the ruminant health and welfare group have identified BVD as a target for eradication in the UK by 2031. The removal of PIs from the individual and the national herd is fundamental to this. So how does the existence of PIs affect BVD control? Number one, if you have BVD in a herd, you cannot eliminate it through vaccination. 
a PI animal will generate a PI calf, no matter if it's vaccinated or not. Hence, they need to be identified and eliminated. <clears throat> Any PI that's generated should have its dam checked if it hasn't already been checked. A vaccinated PI animal will always shed and will only stop shedding once they are cold or they die. In the meantime, they may well have generated several more PIs. Number two, heifers should be protected before they go to the bull. It isn't uncommon for heifers to get their BVD vaccine when they come in to be PD'd after their first season mating. The problem with that, of course, is that by that point, the heifers will be beyond that vulnerable window of when a PI would be generated. So if they were exposed to BVD, whether it's within the herd or over a fence with neighbor's cattle, the damage is already done. No amount of vaccination is going to reverse that PI being generated. Number three, once found, PIs should be removed from the herd as soon as reasonably possible. Often they won't grow as well, but equally, they are very likely to succumb to mucosal disease before reaching slaughter weight. And in the meantime, of course, they will be shedding BVD virus. They'll be immunosuppressing their pen mates, making their pen mates more likely to succumb to scours and pneumonia and a myriad of other diseases. Number four, and finally for this video, always be cautious when buying in-calf heifers. You can test the heifers as they arrive. You can make sure they're not PIs, but always consider the likelihood of them being exposed to BVD during that vital window. It is prudent to test the calves once they are born to make sure they aren't PIs that have been generated during that pregnancy. So that's a very quick run through of what a BVD PI is and what their relevance are to BVD control. As usual, any specific questions relating to your herd and BVD control in it should be directed at your vet. Otherwise, if you made it this far, well done. There'll be the weekend vlog coming out soon. I'm a bit behind with this technical. It's not quite Tuesday. If you're new to the channel, feel free to go and have a look at some of my previous videos. If you like what you see, consider hitting subscribe, ringing the little bell next to it to make sure you don't miss any future videos, leaving me a comment and liking the video. Until next time, over and out.